You're now live. Yes. Oh, are we live? Yes. <gasps> what? Yeah, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Hello out there in internet land. Uh, we are coming at you live here from Relativity School. This is our pilot presentation of our first uh, live chat with one of our staff and or faculty members where we encourage you, our audience, to write in any questions you have. Uh, today is Halloween, you guys. O-M-G. Yes. Hence the weirdo. Mm -hmm. um, and the weirdo and the weirdo. Uh, yeah. Really quick intros. Uh, this is Terrence Johnson, our social media coordinator. He's incredible. Uh, this is Dr. Will Lynn, our general education <laughs> director. Save us all. And yeah. this is, I'm Katie Northlake, and I'm a high school <laughs> development specialist here at Relativity School. Um, our costumes are, uh, Terrence, what are you? Uh, I am a Slytherin student. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm the oh. microcosmic man. Oh my gosh. And, <laughs> I, <laughs> and I'm a unicorn! Yay! <laughs> so, um, so hi guys, we, we love to see you, and we, this is sort of our fireside chat, and because it's Halloween, and we actually have Dr. Will in. Dr. Will in is our general education director. He has a PhD in mythological studies, so he's like crazy smart. And he uh, knows everything there is to know about myth, and we are in today, All Hallows Eve, where we all eat candy, etc. And we talk about gore and myth and uh, explore that. And here at Relativity School, where we're storytellers, we, uh, we're talking about it today. So, um, any questions anybody has, please write in and be like, what's up? <laughs> uh, we only have uh, Dr. Lin here for the next 30 minutes. So, let's talk about Halloween stuff. Yes. Yeah? Okay. And he's ready because he's in his outfit. <laughs> um, so we're just sort of talking about all things Halloween. It, do you like have a general back, like what the heck is it? Like, can we start well, there yeah. and like... Essence is a good place because there's so many different traditions all over the world uh, that have come up to do so many different uh, customs, rituals, mm -hmm. uh, that maybe the best place to start is what is in common to all of them? What do they share? Mm -hmm. what's, 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 in the, what's the juice mm -hmm. uh, that's making them all do their thing? Um, well, one of the big things uh, that you'll see in these in these uh, traditions all over the world is that this is a moment when the uh, veil between the other world and this world is thin. Ooh. It's a time when when things can come from the other world into this world, and where you're, it's a time when we're not safe from the other world. That's so, interesting. not only does, do most cultures have some notion of this, but this this moment is normally connected to some moment in their own life cycle. So, the harvest, uh, the equinoxes. Um, <clears throat> in the case of Samhain, uh, the Celtic or the Gaelic tradition, it's when there's a transition from the harvest season into winter, winter, winter. Oh. So you end the harvesting, you enter winter. That is the that's the moment. Uh, and this is what you'll see for, for many Halloween-like traditions is that they're in the fall. So if you're, why would there be a relationship between the fall and the other world and dead? Mm. Uh, the answer is perhaps obvious because it's in the fall that the world is dying. Uh, so what are those evil forces causing Aha! the world to die? <laughs> and on that night when there's an opening, what are those evil forces causing everything to die and what will they do when they come, when they come out? Wow. And you know what's so interesting? Um, what is the th That sort of leads me to the thought of um, how we, we talk about Halloween spooky, boo, mm -hmm. uh, scary music playing. We all like to go see the gore. And I I've always wondered that in association with what you're talking about in terms of, I don't know, all of our fascination with, with I guess, fear. Or mm -hmm. I myself... <laughs> because you know, purple, pink, and happiness illuminating from my face, everyone. <laughs> I um, I do not bode well with fear. Like I, I'm like I'm, I'm scared enough in life. I don't need it. It doesn't it doesn't give me that jump. Like ooh, watching a horror movie with candy and you know that that doesn't sound fun for me. So does it scare you? It it really does. Yeah. And I say to myself, why would I want more fear in my life? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys? What is your guys's? Um, are you guys drawn to the fear? Like, what do you do? You I are... love, I love horror movies mm. um, and mm. horror TV shows and horror everything. Uh, just binge watch all of Stranger Things. Oh, I'm not done um, yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love. I don't, and I don't know because I don't particularly like being scared in real life. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think there's something compelling about 
going to something that is scary and having to sort of wrestle with how you feel. Um, hmm. I don't like the gore stuff, though. So, like, I can, I can do a little bit of blood and guts here and there. Yeah. But, like, you know, movies, like like a hostel is probably not something that I will go see. Because um, I prefer, I just want you to, like, to scare me. Because <laughs> I, think, I think there's something about horror that really just digs down into, like, who you are as a person. Oof. Mm-hmm. You know? Because, oh, like, what are you really scared about? Oh God, Can my make rent! A connection? Yes. Yeah, right. Please. So that's so that's a psychological fear. So yeah, so uh, there's right. this this uh, cyclical or the the uh, with the crops with the big picture with the seasons. There's this uh, idea that the demons of the dead or something like this are in the other world. But mm-hmm. in our own minds, we also repress the demons. And so Halloween wow. is not just a moment when the demons of uh, underworld or something like this come up. It's that moment, it's that ritualized moment for our own inner demons to be confronted on an annual mm. basis. Our own okay. fear of death, our own relationship. Oh my God. So this isn't just the collective repression, it's also the individual repressions that we're fearing coming up in this, in this moment. I don't need to go to therapy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, need to visit Will's cubicle. Um, do we, tell us if we have any questions. Cause I, I uh, yeah, I'm trying to let, that's why, if you're wondering why I keep leaning forward. I don't know how to, to work the internet. I'm trying to read, the font on my phone is very small. Uh, you want to pick it up and like look this. at it? Can no, you I, see think it I think we're can good. Go no, I can't. Here? Tell us if we it's have any questions. On it's just comments and stuff? And yes. We have likes and hearts coming our way. Yes, thank all of you guys for do you, tuning in. So Dr. Lynn, yeah. um, or should I say microcosmos? Yes. <laughs> um, do you, what do you, are you drawn to fear? Are you into this? Oh, right, right. Uh, I avoided answering that question, didn't yes, I? You did. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, I did. Um, I, uh, I think that I can watch horror movies now. I was one of the person that used to always not want to watch them, and I, mm-hmm. I would be one of those people who said, yeah. I don't want to corrupt my psyche with those that imagery. I don't mm-hmm. want it polluted. I don't want it in there uh, because it'll give you nightmares. It'll give you all these things. Mm-hmm. And uh, But I've recently learned of the Bond tradition in Tibet, one of the things that they do mm. is uh, it's called sky burials. So mm. when somebody dies, they put you on this platform and they let the birds pick you apart and they let you just rot and die. And now, and now the Bon people, the the um, meditators, the mm. ascetic monks, they actually imagine themselves ha- this happening to their own bodies before they die. And they do all these things to imagine the worst stuff in the world happening to them. But why do they do it? They do it so that they can feel totally detached from it. It's a challenge to themselves oh. to be able to witness and then and conceive of and imagine their own death Whoa. because it's an illusion. And so I think, I like to think I might be finally moving towards a place in my mm. relationship with horror film where I can experience it all as uh, projections and I illusions see. that mm. I can like challenge full... and test my own. Yes. Yeah. Like it's, it's more <laughs> involved say, that way. Yeah, I just like, I just like being scared. I don't know. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I feel like horror, horror in particular is just something it's a, it's so very personal it to is. everybody because I know oh, yeah. like in the case of me it's like I don't do the gore like I just I have no desire to watch people that, be cut up and dice slice and dice but mm-hmm. like I could I love something like Friday the Thirteenth which people are getting sliced and dice but it's not like Death that's not the, the focus squirting. yeah well I mean like <laughs> you know certain there's a there, you know we've been talking about death and demons and all mm-hmm. of that so it's like. You know, being scared of the things that are potentially out there is a fascinating thing versus just being like, okay, somebody's just going to carve you up, you know. Mm-hmm. Y- y- completely. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what I find fascinating? Because, you know, we here at yeah, no. uh, mm-hmm. Relativity School yes. are, uh, you know, Terrence is an incredible writer and, and I myself am just a genius in general. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm always fascinated by really great r- horror writing and films when they're done well when, mm-hmm. when I'm finding my body have pal- palpitations yeah. and I'm sweating and I'm <laughs> having nightmares I- I'm like good on you to the right to the crew you, you know I-, I-, I find it incredible because as a writer I'm-, I'm a writer I never go there my, my yeah. system will not go right. to a place where I want to scare my audience so right. I-, I find that so fascinating and in, in myth mm-hmm. which he has a PhD in did I say that um how much is horror and gore, mm. like horror and gore, you know? Like, well, is, that a, is that a predominant? Well, I can say that what's happening, so yeah, like myth is normally expressive of all the stuff in the psyche, which includes all the gore. But in the same way that we like to keep our everyday life clean of gore yeah. and our everyday year clean of Halloween, and we kind of repress it to these small festivals where we finally confront these things with yeah. really big, but yeah. we, we, we repress. Yeah. Um, 
um, I think we do the same thing. Um, I lost myself. What'd you ask? <laughs> well, is, is horror and gore a really predominant ah, theme? Yes. So in we've myth? done the same thing to fairy tales in myth, where we've whitewashed, we've we've made fairy tales good for children. Yes, we have. And so I'll give you an example of the Little Red Riding Hood. Most people don't know just how gory that story right. really oh, yeah, yeah. is. It's I think crazy. I was telling you guys. So so one of the examples is um, Little Red Riding Hood gets to the grandma's house. And uh, yells, there's a holler from the other room, from the wolf, saying, you know, get yourself some food, get yourself some wine. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that what she's eating and drinking is, is uh, bread made from the bones of her grandmother. <gasps> Gross! Wine, it's effectively the blood <laughs> yeah. of her grandmother. And the cat says, what? the cat calls her a slut in the middle of the story for eating her grandmother. And then she gets in bed. <laughs> And one of the versions oh of the story, God. she wants to get out of bed to pee, and the wolf keeps saying, nope, just do it in bed. And then, in an, and so there's well, perversions hygienic. there. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another, um, and then in another version, I don't remember, I mixed these up a little bit, uh, where she actually escapes by using the intestines of the wolf as her rope that she uses to descend from the window. So very gory stuff. We yeah. tend to really bring it down. But the difference is that the audiences were originally adults for the imagination. Right. What happened in the right. Enlightenment is we saw anything imaginal as fantasy, as irrational, as mm. dumb, as childish. And so what Tolkien Whoa. points out is that we relegated the imagination to the nursery where it was rotting until he and C.S. Lewis literally themselves gave birth to the genre of fantasy and paved the way for things like Harry Potter mm -hmm. uh, and the adult Unicorns. wearing of unicorn outfits <laughs> uh, because he basically, Tolkien took it upon himself with the Inklings and others to revive the right of the imagination to be an adult organ. That's yeah. Thank you. That's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's Speaking of Harry, Harry Potter, yes. Slytherin <laughs> student. Yes. Right? The best house. Oh! <laughs> Are you a Slytherin? Yes, absolutely. No. No! Absolutely, yes. I don't know what I am. I've never done it. Um, I, yes, can you read, are there any questions? Yeah, uh, lots of people, thank you guys for commenting. If you see me leaning forward, it's just <laughs> the, the text on my phone screen. We is, can't is read any, it. It's so tiny. Help! Is anybody trying to call me Arrow? Uh, <laughs> no, but some people said you were smart. I saw that. Um, Everybody loves okay. Dr. Lin. What and else it, are they saying? And uh, There's a lot of hearts, you guys. Yeah, there's a lot of hearts, hearts. which is pretty cool. There's a lot of hearts. He, he should have a show. You mean me? He, no. So, I don't care what pronoun. I think you guys uh, are talking about me. He was. If you guys look on our Facebook page, we did do American Gods recaps. So he, Those were you, great. Yeah, you kind of did have a show. Um, and by the way, speaking of shows and Halloween... Jen I, Bowen, and, to, Jen Bowen, we love you. I Jen highly Bowen's encourage a, you. A unicorn what, picture. Uh, Elric, the head of the film program, is now uh, for the Halloween movies that are featured on Hulu. Yes. Uh, he's, he's, uh, his group, his podcast, is reviewing Halloween films on Hulu and pointing uh, uh, Hulu users towards it. You can find him on the front banner on, on Hulu for this. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you, Dr. Lin. Yeah. Um, Harry Potter... Mm -hmm. Is this little known story, <laughs> and we have a Slytherin here, and yes. um, so I I think it's so interesting. We all know you know Harry Potter, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I've been to Thank the God. Wizarding World. Oh That's my God, so yeah. I, yeah. you're cooler than I. Uh -huh. <laughs> so of course we have this obsession with, you know, not obsession, but of course the theme of death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do we think that? I mean, of course you know, I'm sure, but you know, God, I, I think I read an interview with her, right, where it was like, yeah, that's what the book's about. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, and it's, yeah. it's this idea of, and, and this, this coming to terms with, and the reconciling mm -hmm. of, and, and her own mother was, you know, had passed before she wrote the book, and had inspired, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so in this, and the gore, and all of this stuff, it's always what, it's mm -hmm. the, I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna get, that kind of thing, yeah. and what is the, and especially when it comes to myth, and, and sort of, you know, the hero's journey, we talk about a lot here at Relativity mm -hmm. School, this thing of how our inner and outer, right? The dying of our inner. Mm -hmm. and, and this theme of death. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the whole, we have skeletons yeah. that pop out of yeah. the, yeah. How, when kids are trick-or-treating. And, and we get really used to that. So the theme of death, why is it so incredibly, I mean, obviously it's, it, it's the thing, isn't it? It's, I mean, the, it's the thing. Camus said that the ultimate philosophical decision is suicide or not. Mm -hmm. You know, or the same with uh, Hamlet, to be or not to be. Um, mm -hmm. I think death is death is the ultimate unknown. Yes. And I think that the dark is the unknown. It is. And so there's this conflation of death and dark, not just because we bury ourselves in the earth or because mm -hmm. it's earth underground, but the mm -hmm. imagination wants to connect mm -hmm. uh, the unknown and death. And, mm -hmm. and so I think a lot of... Um, a lot of stories are actually, many, many myths 
uh, we've lost the fact that many of them are probably preparations for death. Mm -hmm. The Eleusinian mysteries, uh, the myth mm -hmm. of Persephone, that's a myth about how to go through death. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, this is a story of how to go through the land of the dead. Mm -hmm. uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, mm -hmm. uh, the Golden Tablets of the Pythagoreans, mm -hmm. these are uh, uh, in Hercules' labors, perhaps even, in the 12 mm -hmm. hours of the underworld. Mm -hmm. So these, these stories may really be serving or responding to our fear of death, our anxiety of the unknown, yeah. in the form of what's called a psychopomp. The psychopomp is someone who's been somewhere no one else has yet. They come back and lead the way. Oh. So this is Christ who died first, mm. and now he leads all of our souls. Mm. This is why on All Hallows' Eve, we pray to all the martyrs and all the priests, because oh. these are the dead who have been there who can now guide the souls of the recently deceased into their safety in the afterlife. I love that. Yeah, I was going to say, it's Halloween is... Is very interesting because it's lots of religious aspects are tied up into it. Um, mm. In terms of mm -hmm. you know what people celebrate and when, so like tomorrow would be like All Souls Day, mm -hmm. um, and you know just very wonderful. So I was, I guess I'm fascinated by the like linking the two. It, it reminds me sort of a, uh, what they were doing on American Gods mm. in a way. You know, like talking about how you have Easter yeah. in that case. Easter is a pop like a goddess of Stara, whose holiday is Easter. But by wrapping it in you know the birth of uh, the resurrection of Christ, I should say, uh, like she gained all this power. But then it wasn't really hers. So, like I'm fascinated by how many different things can be encompassed in like a ho like a, a single holiday. I, I'm going to yeah. make a crazy prediction that in 500 or 1,000 years, we're going to have four holidays, and they're going to be the core anchoring holidays that we all kind of have and don't, mm -hmm. you know. So it's going to be the Easter holiday, the, the, the spring equinox, the fall equinox, the winter solstice, the summer solstice, which is kind of the most boring. But even uh, <laughs> the even the, uh, the, the, the fireworks participates in that from July 4th. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we see in Christmas, you see in Easter, you see in Halloween, the syncretism of all these global holidays mm -hmm. because they all have a common essence essence around what that equinox is or what that solstice is. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm. I think that it's exactly like what, what you saw with Easter and what we saw in American Gods. American Gods is just a great show that does good comparative mythology mm. um, and, mm. and shows its work. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, how, uh, Christmas is another example, and I hope we get to talk again on Christmas about how, <laughs> yeah. many, how many holidays are overlaid on top of the winter solstice. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's such incredible storytelling that... Gosh, if you think about it, you're right. Like, you know, just aligns with this. It's season. Mm -hmm. We're about to go into winter. Mm -hmm. You know, what are we shedding both innerly? In, innerly is that a word? It's a word now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Internally and and, and externally. Yeah. Um, uh, as you said, the shedding of uh, mm -hmm. inner demons. Uh, Leaves. Leaves, <laughs> the colors. Yeah. The chafe of the changing. grain. This is yeah. the time when you thresh the grain and you separate the seed from the chafe, just like the fallen leaves. I love that. <laughs> and, and so many people love fall, don't they? They yes. say it's so beautiful. But certainly, and I lived on the East Coast for 15 years, uh, what comes after, so interesting, because the mm -hmm. leaves are changing. And and then they're yeah. dead. Mm -hmm. They're dead. Yeah. They're, we, we are about to go into... Yeah. It's a lifeless phase. Yeah. It's a lifeless mm -hmm. phase. And, and the cold. darkest time of the year. So per storytelling, mm -hmm. we say mm -hmm. we change, we fall, we die, and exactly. all of a sudden. Yeah. The word fall is really interesting, right? The yes. fall yeah. and oh. the fall. Yes. And, you know, the, the, this literally we're going from, we're falling from the brightest, warmest uh, days to the darkest, coldest, most lifeless days. Uh, yeah. Literally the fruit, the ripe fruit is falling. Literally the ripe grain is falling. This is, mm -hmm. this is the time of, you know falling yeah. i love that yeah. i love that there's though. something that i want to tie into that like what what i find like really interesting that we've, we've talked about sort of fairy tales and we've talked about death and in the concepts of why you know our fairy tales now are very like totally different so like the disneyfication of mm -hmm. these different things and so like anytime i think about halloween i think about like a grim fairy tale it's like yeah oh like somebody's dying somebody's getting left at the altar like, yeah. <laughs> and all, all of these like really dark things but using sort of this fantastical thing so it's like we can go trick-or-treating as michael myers right yeah from these movies but then it's like the movie is about like a deranged serial killer and so like i'm i'm fascinated by i guess maybe mm. the separation between like 
that and how we... Why do we dress like what we're afraid of? Yeah. Well, <gasps> two things Ooh. on that. One is that actually the costumes, one in, in one version of the tradition is that you're dressing up like the demons so that you blend in, so they don't single you out, so they don't go. Ah, okay. The other is that counter curses are often actually uh, in the form of the original curse. So the evil eye and the counter curse to the evil eye are mimetic with one another. Okay. Uh, so so um, hmm. it's kind of like if you want a PTSD, how do you actually get over the PTSD? A repeated exposure to less intense examples of the same trauma. Mm. You want to expose yourself yeah. to the same thing which traumatized mm. you. And so ah. in some ways wearing the costume is uh, overcoming a fear as well. Um, I guess we could probably unpack this a thousand ways. This is really interesting. It, there's also this the yeah. celebration of the costume itself. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, kids love it, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's like it's like a you know. Great point. But yeah. adults are just to be costumed. Yeah, there's there's like, and I've always, I mean, obviously you can tell this is not <laughs> the most expensive thing on the block. You know what I mean, everyone? <laughs> Pull off this unicorn's a little sad, but um, my point of saying that is people, yeah. the adult. Yeah. Reception. Once we go through adolescence, and then you know, we, it's sort of then you know. Remember, like you're a teenager, you're like, what do I do on Halloween now, right? You're like mm-hmm. a little too old to trick or treat. And our celebration, though, besides just sort of the funny um, prototype of the Halloween party, right? Mm-hmm. We really do get into it, and when we see like a brilliant idea, we we have just such joy. Mm-hmm. We're like, no mm-hmm. way. Yeah. And I wonder this sort of communal, right? All right. Let me ask you this. Do you think maybe we haven't just repressed the things we're afraid of? Mm. Maybe our culture has in some ways also repressed imagination itself. Oh, and okay. so bingo! And, and, and <laughs> Halloween is not just this moment of the outpouring of the, un- the things we repress that are scary. Yeah. It's also th- right. all that freedom and creativity. So we that's true. Uh, that's true. So yeah. true. Playfulness. <laughs> if anybody has any, um, we didn't forget about you. Hi guys. Yes. Um, can you see anything, Terrence? I see <laughs> a new like... show called The Crew. <laughs> Thanks, Teddy's Wells Hawaii. This is like <laughs> I love it. Hawaii. Hashtag oh ghost God. stories. Everybody yes. in Hawaii likes that. Um, um, if anybody has any questions for we're, we only have a couple minutes we have left. Like two for minutes. Do, we have two <laughs> minutes for Dr. Lynn. He's brilliant. Um, oh God, so you know, crazy. ask about myth or anything, uh, or well, just you know. Still... Oh, he's still looking at his notes. Yes, see, any last any last things about I got a good one. I got All good Hallows' one Eve, right. Dr. Lit. So, here we go. So uh, uh, in, in the, there was a Dionysian ritual where a woman would swing over uh, the wine the, when they first opened the wine after it sat for mm. a long time. Mm. And then this was uh, also, um, before it was wine, it would have been mead. And before it was in a vessel, it would have been in uh, a bear skin. And so in that, right when the bearskin finally ferments over, it bursts the bearskin because mm. it's finally finished going. Mm-hmm. And this is those spirits from below coming out. <gasps> and so this is the same that. thing with wine. When wine finally ferments and is done, this is its... Com- so the opening of the jar is also this, this moment when you've opened the, the veil, the portal to the other world. And so this is why it's also associated with Pandora's jar. And the opening of Pandora's jar is very much a Halloween moment. All the stuff down there, it's open for a second. It all comes out. out. It pops out. There may have actually been a relationship between Pandora's jar, these wine jars that the women swung over uh, in open skirts, you know, Mm -hmm. to be impregnated, fumes, all those things. Uh, And then um, uh, uh, then later, Mm -hmm. um, it it seems that these may also have been the same uh, uh, vessels used as urns. Oh wow! So they literally the demons from the underworld, the spirit energy of the wine of the of the of the honey mead. Mm. It's all about the spirit of the other world having this moment of being able to come up, and so there's just another good wow. example, another good ritual. Of that. I feel like you could dissect it for days. Yes. You really could this season. The fervor mm-hmm. of it. Well, oh my gosh, you guys! I hate that we have to go, but we have to go eat candy. <laughs> um, and I have to prance around in my awkward Are you unicorn. a diabetic horse? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, sadly. Sadly, I am. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to our yes. very first uh, live REL school chat with our illustrious Dr. Lin. Thank you, Dr. Lin. Oh, thanks, you guys, for having me. Oh, look at us. We're flanking his face. <laughs> like a very, uh, thank you to Terrence, our incredible social media coordinator, and thank you to me for just being alive. Thanks. Right. Thanks. I mean, look at this. Look at this yes. face. Uh, thanks, you guys. We'll come at you uh, soon with another one of these mm-hmm. more surprise rail guests. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye.
Happy Halloween. Is that an hour? Yes. Yeah. Wow.